Hi, I'm Magnus Ligback, a trainer and nutritionist with more than 20 years of experience. And I am here with Dr. Michael Bruce. That's me. A sleep expert and a whole lot more. Do you mind telling us about yourself? Absolutely. So uh, my name is Dr. Michael Bruce. I have a PhD in clinical psychology and I'm actually medically board certified in clinical sleep disorders. So I am that crazy guy that took the medical boards without going to medical school and passed. And I've spent my entire career in sleep and sleep medicine. And uh, I've been very fortunate, Magnus. I've, I've gotten to work with a lot of some of your clients, probably. That's right. Um, you know, I've been on the Dr. Oz show, Oprah Winfrey, wonderful experiences like that. And, and you know, it's been great to be able to work with so many different clients and learn more about how sleep affects so many aspects of people's lives. So it's, it's been a fun journey so far. Before we get into it, I want to thank today's sponsor, Element. Element is an electrolyte drink mix that contains lots of healthy salts, no artificial sweeteners, and no sugar. Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfect for people on a keto, low carb or paleo diet. One thing that I love about Element is they don't put any artificial ingredients, colorings, fillers or any of that junk in their electrolyte mixes. I have started drinking Element in the mornings to avoid dehydration and my favorite flavors are definitely watermelon and raspberry. You can try Element totally risk-free, and if you don't like it, you'll receive your money back, guaranteed. Element is used by everyone from the US Olympic team to the NFL, NBA, and more. For a free Element sample pack of all the different flavors, you only need to cover the costs of shipping. Get yours today at drinkelement.com slash Magnus Method, or click in the link in the description below. Thanks again to Element, back to today's video. You know, it's been a lot of fun working with and learning more about sleep all along the way. And, and it's funny because you and I have a lot of similar philosophies about what goes on. That's right. And, and you and I talk off camera right. about how exercise and sleep are similar. They really are in so many different ways, Magnus. So like as an example, you know, we were talking before and it's like when before you run a race, what do you do? You don't just out of the starting gates go, right? You have to stretch, right? You have to get your body warmed up before you're gonna do some type of an event. Well, guess what? It's literally the same with sleep. What I call that is my pre-bedtime routine. And so I've actually created a little idea called the power down hour, right? So one hour before the bedtime that you've selected, you take that hour and you break it up into three 20 minute segments. I love that because we hear that all the time, the hour before you go to bed, there's so many things you should do. You should turn off your computer, you should right. do this and that, but you really have a method. Absolutely. Love to hear it. So first 20 minutes, stuff you just gotta do. So in our house, it was getting kids backpacks together, finding shoes, sports equipment, you know, stuff for the next day where you know you don't wanna be running around like a crazy person early in the morning. The second phase of 20 minutes is for hygiene. Brush your teeth, wash your face, get, get your bed clothes on. Here's an interesting tip for any of the uh, people out there who wear makeup. So many people who wear makeup during the daytime don't take their makeup off until the very last thing that they do at night in front of a brightly lit mirror. And what they're doing is they're exposing their eyes to all of this big blue light. So for a lot of people, when they're in front of that bright light and in front of that mirror, they're getting all of this blue light now, folks out there might not remember this, but blue light has effect, if it hits a particular cell in your eye called a melanopsin cell, it actually turns off the melatonin faucet in your head. Let's be honest, we want that melatonin faucet on when we're about ready to go to bed, not off. So in that second 20 minute segment, if you are in the bathroom, do yourself a favor, turn down the dimmer switch a little bit so it's not so bright. Um, another thing that you can do during that period of time, a warm bath. There's actually data to show, specifically for people with insomnia, if they take at least a 100 degree bath for about 15 or 20 minutes, roughly a half an hour to 45 minutes before bed, here's what will happen. Their core body temperature will go up and then it will drop very similar to the way it should be dropping. So again, that 20 minute segment is great for doing your hygiene. Here's the last one and this is the most important segment of the hour. That's to take the last 20 minutes and use it for some form of meditation relaxation, prayer, something to, as I say, land the plane, right? So you've got to have enough runway to kind of get yourself there. Many people think that sleep is an on-off switch. 
it's really not. It's more like slowly pulling your foot off the gas and slowly putting your foot on the brake. So there's a process that really needs to occur there. But if you can take that hour before bed and break it down into these three 20 minute segments like we've been talking about, this will allow you to have that stretch before you run, actually, in terms of being able to get your body ready and your brain ready for sleep. I like that. I like how you break it down in 20 minute cycles. It makes it so easy to, to remember and easy to follow. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I'll tell you something else. Another way that sleep is a lot like exercise is the equipment. Right? So I am a runner, right? And I can run a race with flip flops and torn cutoffs with, you know, with the boom box on my arm, but my time's not going to be. <laughs> I would love to see good. that. I know, right? <laughs> it, would, it wouldn't be pretty, right? That could be our next video. I know, maybe so. So, but if I have my right shoes on and my dry fit wear and I've got my tunes going, I can definitely run and, and accomplish that task. So having the right equipment for exercise turns out to improve your performance. I would argue that sleep is the same way. So actually, we are here today in arguably the greatest sleep spa there is, the yes. Aston's Sleep Spa. People may have already recognized it from the blue check, um, which many people have had, but Aston's has an amazing mattress. Um, and what's cool about mattresses in general is this turns out to be the largest influence from a product on our sleep. Um, I personally sleep on a Haston's bed uh, and I have- So do I. I know, it's kind of funny, right? <laughs> so like, that's how we met. So it's cool to be able to sit that back and think about how do you pick, choose, or understand that this type of equipment is gonna be important for your sleep. So to be clear, it's the largest influence in terms of it controls for temperature and it allows you to give you support. That way you have spinal alignment and then your body can actually recover. Now I know this is your area of expertise is recovery, which is why we're doing this video because recovery from exercise and recovery from with sleep actually work hand in hand in quite a nice way. Other things to think about when you're thinking about equipment for sleep, I like to think of the five senses. So when I go into somebody's bedroom, I look at light, I look at sound, I look at touch being the bed, right? I look at smell and uh, I look at taste. Right? So taste, we're going to talk about food because you're a nutritionist soon, but those other four areas turn out to be incredibly, incredibly important. Light in particular, we've mentioned it briefly, but I want to mention it quickly again. You really want to try to avoid too much light at night. Once again, when light hits the eye, it turns off the melatonin faucet. We want that thing going as much as possible. Sound is another big one. Um, and unfortunately, many folks out there sleep next to somebody or something that makes a lot of sound, like snoring. I have to tell you, we just got a new puppy, our third dog, <laughs> and he's an English bulldog mix. And I have a French bulldog. He snores like... Like a, a freight train. It's so unbelievable. That is really <laughs> affecting my wife's sleep. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So my Maybe wife's the opposite. Well. My wife can't sleep without the dog. She'd rather not sleep with me, she'd rather have the dog in there. Um, I can't sleep with the dog because the dog snores like a freight train. So sound turns out to be an incredibly important aspect. For some people, earplugs is a good way to go. Um, there are a whole host of different uh, options out there. There are sound machines that you can put by your bed. Um, there are things called sleep buds that are earbuds with special music in them that you can wear in your ears. So there are a lot of really good solutions there for sure. One thing people always ask me about is smell say, Dr. Bruce, does aromatherapy really work? Believe it or not, there are two double-blind placebo-controlled studies looking at lavender and something called Ylang Ylang as aromas that will help with relaxation. Now, to be fair, you don't just want to sniff something and pass out unless it's like ether, right, or something like that. What, what it'll do is when you smell it, it'll give your muscles a relaxation response, and that will allow the natural sleep process to begin to take over. It can actually be helpful, however, Here's the big one, is many people look at aromatherapy with candles, not when it comes to sleep. Fire and sleep do not mix. So we don't want lit candles giving people aromatherapy in the evening. Makes better, sense. Better to use a spray or a little sachet or something in your pillow or something along those lines. Um, and again, the final one um, is touch. And so touch has a lot to do with temperature and it has a lot to do with support. And that's why Haston's couldn't be a better product for most people out there because of what it does. It has incredible support, um, but it also has an ability to keep the body cool, which is really critical, critical, critical when it comes to sleep. 
So Magnus, there is one other way that sleep is a lot like exercise. So when you talk with your athletes and you're training them, you don't just work them out and then they're done. What do you do at the end of their workout? Cool down. Exactly. Exactly. So you help everybody do better, avoid injury, really get the most out of your workout from the cool down. So we have a cool down in sleep, but it's called the morning routine. Right? So when you wake up after this sleep event that you just had, what are the things that people can do right away that can actually give them a much better morning all around? So the very first one is breathing. One of the first things I tell people to do is pull your feet over to the side of the bed and take 15 deep breaths really get it in and really push that carbon dioxide out. What we find is number one, it's very alerting, so it helps wake people up, but number two, it really centers people for their day, allows them to not have a million thoughts running through their head. The second thing I want them to do is drink water. Many people don't know this, but sleep in and of itself is a dehydrative event. Um, you lose almost a full liter of water each night just from the sweat, oils, and the humidity in your breath. So hopefully room temperature water, at least 15 ounces, right there by the bedside. The next thing I ask people to do is go outside if you can or go to the window and get some direct sunlight. So how we don't like light at night in our pre-bed routine, we love light in the morning for our post-bed routine. Because when the sunshine hits us, number one, we get some vitamin D, which we all know is really good for us and turns out to be a circadian pacemaker. But number two, that light turns off that melatonin faucet and that allows us to be able to have a much better morning. Now, the other thing I like people to do is if you can, exercising in the morning is a great way to start off your day. I personally like to have people go outside because then they can get the fresh air, get the sunlight and really feel good. A little walk um, might be all that you have time for, but that can be very, very beneficial for you. And me personally, I hang out with my dog. I like to bring my dog out in the morning and I like to spend two or three minutes just with him and I. And you know what, if you want some great unconditional love every single morning and a great way to start your day, hang out with your dog, pet him a little bit and enjoy some time there in the bright sunshine, in the fresh air. I found it works wonders for everybody. Me too, I, I love that. That's a, one of the first things I do in the morning. I take my dogs for a walk. Then you get the fresh air, you get the sun, because we are in California. I know, right? And, That's the uh, best part of being and here. You get that love. What about if someone's got a hard time falling asleep? So we know these people exist, right? I'm a sleep doctor. I've been working with them for years. So I actually created my own sleep supplement called Sleep Doctor PM. We have two different versions of it. One is for people who have a hard time falling asleep. We have a second version for people who have a hard time staying asleep. Very few people have been able to find a supplement that you can take in the middle of the night that doesn't make you feel groggy the next day. So I've spent a great deal of time developing these and I'm excited to be able to offer them at Sleep Doctor PM. We'll make sure to put a link in the description as well so people can not only find you and your work, but also your products. Awesome, thank you so much. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button press like and I'll see you next week. Sweet dreams.